Okay. You want me to go ahead? Yep, you're good to go. Okay. So you already know my name. I'm sorry. And I just thank y'all for um, listening and allowing me to share my testimony with y'all. This is my first time being able to share it in its entirety, but I'm not going to keep y'all too long because I know I've been late and stuff. So um, growing up, we did grow up in church, but my viewpoint of it, I just thought that we were being forced. Like I didn't I was, you know, I was a kid. I hated going to church and stuff like that because I wasn't really seeing the demonstration of God's power in the church. I just heard about him and stuff. Till, oh, and I also heard of people speaking in tongues, but like you never really know like that it's legit until it, it happens to you or you feel the power of it. So um, I didn't believe and I went, I didn't really believe in it. I was shallow with it and stuff. So I would say around seventh grade one day we were all sitting in the kitchen as a family and um I heard my sister my older sister she was in a room and she started speaking in tongues and stuff and I guess that's what sparked the curiosity and after that moment I realized now I see that the Lord has started giving me dreams after that and in the dreams I would be speaking in tongues and stuff but I never really it never really happened physically but in the dreams I was speaking in tongues and I could feel the power of the holy spirit and stuff in the dreams so after that i had told my mom and then she prayed over me and i in seventh grade i was baptized mm -hmm. with fire with being able to speak in tongues and i'm grateful for that so oh, that, i'm sorry i'm sorry um, i had to mute someone you're good to go you're good okay well, and so when the holy spirit like had came and he was living inside of me that's i guess that's I started being convicted of a lot of stuff early on. So um, I could, I did it, but I couldn't get into anything how I saw other people getting into it. Like everybody around me was smoking and I couldn't smoke without thinking about God. And it made me so angry. I couldn't, I would, my philosophy on it was, Lord, you let everybody live their life, but why can't I live my life before I, you know, I get serious about you and stuff like that. So I went on like this about back and forth, back and forth until um, I want to say after I graduated high school, I was still back and forth until I turned 18 and stuff. And that's when life started hitting like, OK, I got to figure out what I'm going to do. And I was so confused about it, though. So I had leaned on the Lord because I knew he was the only one who could, you know, supply that for me and stuff. And in the midst of, I want to add in the midst of me being so back and forth with him, the Lord was still so gracious enough to still continue to use me in little ways and um, still give me dreams and visions that I still remember to this day so vividly. And he was in those dreams and visions, he was showing me what he had in store for me, the things that he has for me if I just surrender to him. And I also want to add in high school, about my junior year, I, I went through this stage of real bad depression and anxiety. And I didn't know what anxiety was. I thought when I would have those anxiety attacks, I thought I was having asthma attacks and they actually did give me an inhaler. So it was like, it was covering up a demonic thing, but, um, and like trying to normalize it and stuff till I got delivered from it, I realized it was a spirit. But anyways, I had graduated and everything. <laughs> And um, I would say I turned 18 and I started having these moments of going back and forth with my mom and them, just going back and forth with them about small, petty things. So I had come up with the conclusion, I'm finna move out. I was tired of being at home and stuff. So I got ready to turn 19 and I started this job. And it was now that I see, I see now that I went for the job because of the title. Like I was a preschool teacher. I've never had a job like that. It's going to sound good like to other people and stuff like that. But the pay wasn't matching up with all the bills that I was going to have. But I really did not care. I wanted to get out of their house. So I'm paying like all these bills moved out. And I'm, I'm not I'm not under the Lord. I feel like I left from under like the Lord's hand in a way like he didn't. I knew I wasn't supposed to move out, but I did it anyways. I had full knowledge, full awareness of me not needing to do that at that time. And I did it anyways. And in me doing that, 
I was a few months had passed and I was also I had a boyfriend and everything so it's like I had gotten into like lust and stuff like that but he didn't live with me he would just come to visit and that's when um all of this stuff started to break loose of I didn't want to be in that apartment because I knew it was something in there imagine that not wanting to go home to your, like the place where you're supposed to feel safe I sat in my car I didn't sleep when I was there I didn't eat and stuff so this went on until I was at work one day and I kept telling everybody something's not right something's not right I don't feel right and I ended up passing out I went to the hospital they at the time I stopped smoking and everything way before I rededicated my life back to God but they tried to play me as if I was taking drugs which I don't take medicine the only thing I will drink is teas and that's the only thing I will take I don't take pills I don't smoke I don't drink and they tried to say that I was um taking opioids which wasn't it was I took and I had taken an opioid but it was from pain from my mouth because I was at the dentist and stuff but that was the first and the last one I had taken so they really, they said that there was nothing wrong with me, but I kept having these episodes of passing out. And for some reason, it felt like the life was being sucked out of me in these moments. So I would literally have to sit down for an hour to like charge back up and stuff in those moments. And it kept happening. Nobody knew what was wrong with me. And I would just pass out without like warning. One time I hit my head on a weight, like a, a workout weight and stuff. It, it got bad. So I had lost my job because I couldn't work around kids because I they don't want nobody passing out and stuff. So I lost my job and I had all these bills. And then that's when I was like the prodigal. My mom and them, they allowed for me to come home. But in me losing my job and having those bills and stuff, it put me into like a really bad situation with debt. And I knew it was something spiritual because nobody could explain the physical physical behind it I kept going to doctor to doctor to doctor and it made me feel like I was going crazy it made me feel like I was passing out like I was doing this to myself it was it was bad it was bad so I was still with the guy after I moved back in with my parents and he don't know anything about it to this day I tried to play it cool and stuff like that so I would say um towards the end of that year which was last year actually all of this happened last year so um I would say in November, that's when I was tired of, you know, the stories of, Lord, I'm sorry, I won't do this no more. I'm not going to do it. I was tired of repenting. I was tired of doing that. And I ended up working a night shift job, third shift. So all throughout the night, I was sitting on that job. I was just worshiping, praying. And I didn't even realize that the Lord had began to work through me and it started really at home. I started ministering to my mama. And it was like, it was so crazy. We started praying as a family. He started mending us. Um, we didn't all go to church, but he started with like my dad and me. We started going to church then slowly but surely my siblings. By me, I did not know this in all glory be to God. But from yielding to the Lord, my siblings saw me going back and forth and stuff like that. But from me being obedient to God, they they showed told me later on that they were admired they admired the way that I would be sitting in my room instead of downstairs with everybody reading the bible spending time with the lord and stuff like that so I would say January of this year is when I got out of the relationship and everything and I just ran full force to the lord and I had I got off of social media. I even, I felt led to go on this fast and it lasted for like five months, I think, where I only, I did not eat any meat. And when I tell y'all that was the, that really changed me tremendously because it showed up in my skin. Like I woke up in the morning and it has a lot to do with God too, but the way that you eat affects your attitude. It affects the way that you think and stuff like that. So it was like, it, it, it was beautiful what the Lord was doing in that time since I was diligently seeking him like he was the only he is and but at that time he was the only thing I wanted because I didn't have any I literally lost everything trying to play in a world I was I 
heard somebody say before, we're fake sinners. Like if you know who God is, if you're saved and you try to go back into the world of sin, you're a fake sinner because you know, I think it's like, you know that it's wrong and you can't even do it right without being convicted. So yes, I'm a fake sinner. I don't know how to do anything. I don't know how to party. I don't know how to cuss. I don't know how to do anything. And I'm proud of that. But um, so lost my train of thought. Oh, I realized that there was nothing I could do without him and stuff like that. And it was like in that year, the Lord had began. He changed. He even the peace that I had. It was so it was so pure, like my mind. It didn't run rampant. I realized in the middle of this year that I'm at peace. I'm finally at peace. Like I could sit in a room and it's not necessarily that I'm not thinking, but it's like my mind isn't running rampant. I'm just, I'm just there in a room and I have full awareness of Jesus being with me and stuff like that. So it was, it was just simple stuff like that. And then that's when I was really, um, he started to open my eyes to the spiritual realm. And I started to like really lean on the Holy Spirit and being able to hear his voice to where it got to the point to where I would just be having conversations. I love talking to God and I would have conversations with the Holy Spirit. And right after I would say something, he would respond. That's how I love that. I love that whole dynamic and stuff. And I'm, I'm, um, right now I'm not like right there. I know he's always talking, but it's not like how it was in the beginning, but, um, yeah, I just always felt him. And it was even to the point where me and my sister were sitting in a room reading this book and stuff about Jesus for kids. It was a book for kids and stuff. And we were just sitting in there and I took a pause from reading and I was re I was reading to her and I took a pause and I had um, we were joking about where we thought Jesus was standing in my room and stuff like that. And then that's when I had stopped and I took a deep. I don't know why I did this. But I took a deep breath and I closed my eyes. And y'all, as if my eyes were open, he was standing right there in front of my window. And I looked at my sister, I said, he's standing right there. And as soon as I said that, I felt he, re it's like he released his power. And it was so mighty, but it was so scary. And we were crying and laughing at the same time. It was overwhelming. And we got up. I'm trying to play it off like, oh, I'm going to go tell my dad Jesus standing in my room. But I was for real scared, y'all. Like, so I we got up and we started running out the room. <laughs> I think it's funny now. And I only can imagine how funny Jesus thought it was because his sense of humor is very real. But yeah, it was just moments like that where he would manifest his being physically to me. And it was, I know it was out of love. Like, I know that. I know that in those moments I like to hold on, I have to hold on to, especially when I'm going through like moments of the valley and stuff like that. But yeah, it was, that, it was that. And um, I would say the dreams definitely picked up and also um, hearing his voice, but I heard God's voice, but I heard it's something different about the three voices. They're all the same, but it's something different. So I heard God's voice. I've heard the voice of the Holy Spirit or felt the voice of the Holy Spirit. Then I heard Jesus' voice one night while I was dreaming. So that's, I'm sorry. I know I was everywhere. I had some notes at home and I'm not even there, but that's that's my testimony of how I'm still living it. But I'm, that's my testimony of how I got to where I am now. I just dropped everything and I ran like for real like I was crazy um, and I'm still running like I'm crazy and it's okay yep hallelujah hallelujah running like you crazy I love that that's beautiful I definitely shared on feeling running like running like you crazy. Um, that was a beautiful testimony and with purpose. And um it just gave me it 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 clearly shows that, like you said, you don't always feel like you on the best um track when running, right? Um, however, Jesus revealed himself to you, and that's necessary because to feel it is a beautiful thing. 
because not everybody can testify to it, right? But I feel like it gave you purpose for not only be believing, but bearing witness. And it gives you the encouragement to the next day, try again with being a better version of yourself or being a better, a faster track star, if that makes any sense. It does, it does. Another thing I would like to share real quick is that in the beginning, so in the midst of me seeking, I feel like this is an important part. In the midst of me seeking the Lord, I wasn't going to church because I hadn't found a church home, but I was listening to sermons online and stuff. And my sister, she had convinced me to go to this church. And what's crazy is I've been having dreams about this church because we went there when we were children, but we left. And I don't know to the in, like the full story of why we left, but I know that it was a serious reason. And she ended up over there. And I've been having a lot of dreams about this church and stuff, but I never got the meaning of them. So, but I went over there with her. And they, they did like a nice little sermon and stuff like that. And I felt, I, I wanted to go up there for prayer. I wanted to and stuff. So I went up there for prayer. Mind y'all, I feel like I'm diligently seeking the Lord and stuff like that. Like I, I, I feel I'm on the right track. And this woman, what she says up there to me in that prayer line, I will not forget that. And she, she didn't even explain what she meant. I feel like that's something, a key thing I take away from that. Cause I, the Lord be leading me to prophesy over people as well. I, the, the gift of prophecy and a uh, word of knowledge and stuff like that. And something I feel we need to be aware of is that I, f I know that you won't know everything when prophesying, but I feel an explanation, like explaining it, explaining what you're talking about. I don't know if this makes sense or not, but she told me something. She said that I, she saw me involved in witchcraft. And I didn't know what that meant. I did not, because I'm seeking the Lord. I'm thinking I'm doing good. Am I doing the witchcraft? Like, who, who is somebody doing it towards me and stuff like that? So that, for two months, I was so scared to pray because I'm like, that's all I've been doing is praying. So am I illegally tapping into the spiritual realm by the way that I pray? So for two months, I felt so dead, like I felt so dead, like spiritually depleted. It felt like somebody was like constantly running me over my emotions. I was always crying, like, and it had gotten to the point where I was sitting in a car one time, you know, it was summer and I was sitting in a car one time and I was about to get out, but I couldn't find the strength to get out and my windows were rolled up. And I just sat in there and I was so desperate to hear from God that it's, I never told nobody this and it's embarrassing, but it's like, I, I had this thought, if you get close enough to death, maybe you'll hear from God. So I sat in my car and, and it was like a good hundred degrees outside with my windows rolled up and I'm just sitting there and I'm like, if I maybe, maybe he'll talk to me if I, it's so sickening, but it was it was that's where my mind was at and stuff and but I had realized I snapped it's like I snapped up out of it and I opened my door and I just went in the house and started praying 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 and for two months I was I couldn't I didn't hear nothing from the Lord I didn't hear nothing from the Lord and in those two months people was asking me to pray for them and I was it was it was so weird but people would ask me to pray for them people would ask me to do this for them concerning like you know, the word of God and stuff like that. And I would do it because I know like we're supposed to serve others, but I'm like, I feel so, I felt abandoned. Everybody wanted from me, want, 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 want. But I felt like nobody was pouring into me. And I know a lot of that comes from being in God's presence and stuff like that, but I needed that. I needed guidance on what to do. And I didn't have the guidance and it made me mad. It made me so mad and I felt so lonely, but of course, the Lord, he restored. I don't even, I couldn't tell y'all the day that it happened, when it happened. I just know that looking back on it, I feel restored. Like for the longest time, the enemy had me thinking I'm a, I was a witch. I was, I was um, doing witchcraft and I couldn't tell y'all what I was doing that, you know, that made it make sense. But 
that's what I wanted to share that I felt left that I left out. So did the lady ever come back to you and try to explain or you just what was she meant by that? Or was she just left it? She she left it. She left it. And I tried to talk to her after the church service had happened. And she didn't say much about it or anything. And I hadn't gone back to that church since. Cause I've been having some real iffy feelings about about that church. And I'm not saying that the woman was wrong. I'm not I'm just saying that I don't know. I didn't know. Yeah, but anything that disrupts your fellowship with with Christ is not of God. So mm. she you she probably was under a demonic witchcraft spirit. She was well, all witchcraft spirit is demonic. But she probably like for her to whisper that on you and not even try to explain it. I think it came from her. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't think sometimes the enemy, he will try to disrupt what God is doing in the midst of our lives because of him knowing or might having some type of little insight on how God wants to use you. So he'll mm. try to hurry up and disrupt it. You know what I mean? Mm. Wow. Well, but I, I thank and praise God you didn't give up and didn't just uh, let her words take root in your heart and just totally disrupt your fellowship with the father. Mm -hmm. I do. I thank and praise God for that. Satan got his little imps in the church too. He got them set up in there. Wow. Yeah, I'm sorry you had to deal with that um, religious spirit. Um, a lot of times, like sister, like sister Serena just said, the enemy is allowed a certain um, view or peek into what God has for us, and he is his job to cause disruption. It's his job to try to keep us separated. Because remember, Satan knows where he's going, and he knows that there there is no repentance. There is no way that he can be redeemed. And so he wants to take as many of us with him as he can. And he plays in our mind. That's how the enemy um, gets most people because your mind is where the battle rages. And if he can get you to doubt, if he can get you to fear, if he can get you to, to be insecure, like anything, any negative thing that comes to your mind, like sis said, to disrupt your fellowship with Christ, you know that's not of God. And what we have to remember is the power of death and life lies in our tongue. And we have the power to decree a thing and we have the power to cut it down, to, to dismantle it to apply and appropriate the blood of Jesus to cover whatever it is, the greater is in us than he that is in the world. If anybody tries to speak into your life, something that's anti what God has told you, immediately shut it down. In the name of Jesus, I renounce that. I rebuke it. I'm not in agreement with it. I send the fire of God to the root of it to burn it up. So sis, what you have to remember is to use your power. God has empowered you. You're already fully equipped. And whatever it is that, again, anybody tried to speak any negative thing over your life, you renounce that thing immediately. Don't think about it. Don't say, I wonder what they meant. No, I don't care what you meant by that. I rebuke it. I renounce it. It's not going to take effect in my life. And I just thank God, again, going on with Sister Serena said that you were able to come out of it. But just know that the enemy is always trying to bind us up. He's always trying to tangle our feet and ensnare us. He's always trying to trip us up. So stay vigilant. 
I thank God for your testimony. I thank God for, for you, for such a young lady, because it took me years and years and years <laughs> before I got it right, before um, I was able to, you know, turn my own voice off and turn off the voice of the enemy to hear what God was saying to me. It's a blessing that you as such a young lady have already um, established and know where it is Christ wants you to go and what it is he wants you to do. And we thank God for you and your testimony. And we will continue to pray and lift you up. But I want you to remember that the enemy, anytime he sees you making strides towards righteousness, and anytime you're walking in that right fellowship, he's coming sure enough to try to tangle your feet and twist you up. So stay vigilant, you know, and know that anything, anything, I don't care if it's a prophetess, a bishop, a pastor, anybody with a title, anybody who thinks they're more um, spiritual than you, if what they are telling you is not in alignment with the word of God and what the Holy Spirit has revealed to you, cut it off. Don't even, don't even let it settle in your spirit because that's how the enemy gets us off track. But I thank you for your testimony. Praise God. Amen. That was good. That was nice. Amen. Yes, I thank you as well. I agree with um, Elder Marie and everybody on the line that's encouraged you. You inspire me. I'm glad that the enemy did not win, which we already know he has not. And I'm just glad that the Lord was walking th with you through this whole journey. And it just showed me something because I heard a pastor say, don't fight for victory, fight from victory. And it can feel, I'm like, okay, how do you fight from victory? How do you fight for victory? <laughs> well, your example is great. Because of course we already know Christ already, he already won. So even though you may not have realized it, I feel like this is just me that you fought from victory. Knowing who Christ was, continuing to lean on him, even in your times of misunderstanding or darkness or how the case may be or whatnot. But um, however, I just, like everybody's saying, I praise God for you. I praise God for you. And it's just the example. He's a, he's, he's an example of words that we can't, we don't even have the words. I always say that we don't even have the words of faithfulness, trustworthiness, a father, a companion, all of those things and more. And I'm just grateful that you, that you shared with us um, just his love and who he is. So I appreciate it. Also, it also showed me that even in those times where you was like you were going through or, you know, like you were, I, I guess, with your anxiety and stuff like that, if, if I'm correct, because I was moving from the car to the house, but um, people will still ask you to pray for you. I like how God gives us reminders that we're still his that we are still his. Even in whatever we're going through, we're still his. He was loving on you that whole time, just reminding you, reminding you, you're mine, you're mine. I'm yours, I am yours. Even like I say, even in your misunderstanding or not understanding, because I've had that before too, and still do every now and then. It's like, how, how can you, sometimes you feel like, I'm going through, how can I help somebody else? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? How can I pray for somebody else? But Christ is like, no, 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 this is me. 
this is my love for you. I'm reminding you of who you are. So I appreciate it. It's just awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sister Erica, that was just so beautiful. I love how you said in that time how God just gave her little reminders that I'm still here and I love you. That is so beautiful. <laughs> that is so beautiful. And I think it brings God for you saying that because that look, that fed me too. <laughs> Amen, Sister Serena, I believe. I'm sorry if I'm saying the wrong name, but amen, amen. I mean, it just, that's, that's what it showed, you know? It's just, he's always reminding us, whether we're catching it or we're not. Always, always. And we may not catch it until weeks down the road and be like, ah, okay, thank you. You were always there. You were reminding me, you know? that you were there, you never left me, your hand was on me, or however the case may be, however he shows himself to you, you know? Thank you, it's just so amazing. I'm in agreement with you guys. Thank God, too, because I'm finding that it is in my, um, help me, Holy Spirit, help me. It is in my time, like, it's not always after I had this great fast that God uses me or he give me a word of revelation. It really has been in those times where I find myself doubting myself or my relationship with God or I'm taking I'm taking, um, uh, help me, Holy Spirit, inventory of my life. And I'm just saying, thank you. You know what I mean? Like that, I was cracking the ass head. This girl's a nut. Who's that, call me? Sister Serena, were you still talking? I think we lost her. I'm sorry, but I muted myself back. Yeah, we heard some people in Sister the background. It, yeah, we heard some people in the background and then it just went out. Maybe she can't hear us, I'm not sure. All right, did anybody else want to have anything, any questions or anything y'all wanted to say to Ashari? I just want to add Ashari, I don't know, I think I cut my camera off, I don't know. So much easier putting a face to the name. Um, I just want to say that I've definitely, being in a, um, not a group, or should I say, being accompanied by you ladies, I will say that all the testimonies that we've shared over time, I'm not always able um, to communicate that probably because like sometimes I get choked up, but I will say that they are familiar uh, stories. Uh, I've actually lived many of them, especially sometimes being confused, but also still um, knowing that I was, to me, how I feel that I was, I was chosen. Um, like I explained that to you before, Sister Gwen, um, but I've never felt, I've been to a few churches and congregations and I've never felt um, at home. Uh, not, I'm not disrespecting anyone's uh, congregation or anything, any you know, place that they call their church home. But for me, that's the main part that confused me most. I never felt, at home or comfortable in that kind of environment that I've experienced as much as I do with our sister group, our group. Um, 
I've also was raised confused because like I shared to y'all before I was raised a uh, Muslim, but I've always felt like spiritually I was different, right? Um, I've never felt at home with churches or comfortable. Uh, and I have had experience with experiences with especially women of the church that the things that they said or um, the things that they said or their body language or delivery never was as welcoming as I am of a person. Like I, I could get along, I could be of company of anybody, so on, so on, but it never made me feel comfortable. So I don't know if you really experienced it with just that one particular um, church, but I've experienced it with many. And I used to feel bad about it at one point. I'm sharing that with, with all of you. I used to feel bad, but just something just didn't sit well in my spirit, in my spirit with um, churches for me. So I don't know if that's like a common thing where um, we all feel, a lot of people feel when it's time to like, um, not answer to your calling, but um, I used to feel bad about it. I did, but I don't anymore. And that type of environment for me just didn't, don't work for me. Okay, you know. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I do as well. I mean, I felt that too <sighs> in a lot of places and just really growing up in one, you know, one church, um, me and one of my childhood um, friends, like a sister, um, like you said, it's just, you are, you, you, you feel out, you, you feel out of place. It's like, you, you know, that you're different, you know what I mean? So you're not by yourself. Um, I also wanted to encourage you because I know you were saying about with, you know, um, correct me if I'm wrong with the you know testimonies and everything because I I feel like it's so beautiful like I said everybody that speaks it is it inspires me it encouraged me as well um and I know you were saying you get choked up or whatnot now choked up to me I know sometimes you know you, you get you get the teary eyed you know what I mean or or something like that you know but if I can encourage you sis um you know just just pour out whenever you feel it. Just pour out whenever you feel it. No matter if you cry or not, because guess what? That's the beauty of those tears. You know what I'm saying? That's the beauty of those tears that he's worked in you. That he's brought you a long way, that he's grown you. And like you said, you know, a lot of us need to hear your testimony because we're going through the same thing or we've gone through the same thing or we can say we relate it. And then with the church thing, I feel like, well, I can speak from my experience. I don't know if you felt like this, but I feel like because church is a building and even Christians, you know, I don't know if they do this uh, consciously or subconsciously. However, we make the body of Christ, the church, like the building. And that's not what it is. Like you say, you feel home right now. I do too, because this is the body. We are the body. If it was men on this line, we are the body. And like Gwen said, you know, everybody has their, you know, own specific, um, I don't want to say role, but gift that God has given us you know, that God has given unto us, you know what I mean? So um, again, that's helping me as well. So be encouraged, stay encouraged, if you will, sis, if you will. I mm -hmm. do, you ladies, you, you, I'm sorry, you ladies definitely um, keep me encouraged, all right? Um, and I, I just do. I have to learn how to um, express myself a little bit more when it comes to like sharing testimonies, anything, you know, to me, any stories of testimony, especially when you feel that it's something that you've grown from or learned from or whatever, right? But I feel like um, I have so many. I don't know where to start. Um, I think I shared that with uh, Sister Gwen. I don't know where to start and they are so beautiful and they are dear to my heart, even with the spirit. And um, like I said, I just, 
I don't know. You ladies definitely do that for me. It might seem I don't want to downplay to no one else, but I don't know how it really feels to each and every one of us on this line. However, I'm telling you all now that it makes a difference. It makes a difference for me. And I feel like even if it saves one person, right? Or if it gives comfort and um, peace, when we peaceful, we deliver differently. We, um, in every way, right? I definitely feel it like, and it makes a difference in my life. And it makes me feel not so much as complete, but it makes me feel good. And sometimes um, uh, on a mission of being whole. Erica, you are right about um, us being the church and not the physical church itself. Um, and then another thing I realized the other day when Prophetess Joan was doing the um, teaching about the covenants is that most churches have covenants. And when the members of the church don't keep the covenants, that causes, you know, disarray. And that could be a reason why a lot of us don't feel comfortable or don't get much out of going to regular churches. Absolutely. Absolutely. And guess what? They not keeping covenants. They not keeping covenants. Even if it looked like they keeping covenants now, which covenant did they not keep? Because there's always one, like I said. And guess what? When there's one, we've committed them all. Thank God for Jesus at the end of the line that it was not us on that cross, but he took it for us. <laughs> so, you know, just to be in care, is like you said, um, Sister Augusta, I don't, I don't, I don't think we realize, you know, when we are in church and people come uh, because they want to, they want to be filled. They want to know about the Lord. They, you know, they want to keep coming. Man, it's a scripture. Um, I'm going to find it for y'all. Trust me. I'm going to get on this Google and find it for y'all. But he said, why would I come for the people that's not sick? <laughs> why? They don't need a doctor. And trust me, I still do. I feel like we all do. We need that doctor. We need that one and only doctor. Each and every day. So if they only knew, if they only knew. And again, like you said, I think that's what turns a lot of people away and a lot of us away. Some of us, I think we just, you know, like now in our, in our um, growing up age, it's like, okay, we're coming into the truth. However, we've had that times even being in a church where people look down on you and this, this, that, and the other. Just a testimony, y'all. I got pregnant when I was 19. Didn't ever have sex or anything in high school, okay? Waited till I got out. Still don't make it better. But once I did that, you best believe everybody in that church was looking at me different. And all I kept hearing was, Erica, not you. I didn't never thank you. I didn't never thank you. And I got tired of it. I got tired of it, but I really didn't know what to say. And just one day, it just came out. And guess what? I said, guess what? Who thought Jesus was going to go to the cross? <laughs> they felt like I was being disrespectful. Take it as you may. Because trust me, he went to the cross for me, honey. And for you. And once you open them eyes, you'll see. <laughs> trust. Sister Erica, I don't know if you can hear me, but the scripture said, they that are whole need no physician. Oh, yes. Which one is that? Which, which one is that, Sister Serena? Which one? I know it's in Matthews, but I'm not oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I mean gotcha. the first. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you so much. Yep. Sister Shari, you mentioned in your testimony that you had been struggling with depression and anxiety and even the passing out. And then you also mentioned that you were free from that. What did that 
Was there a specific incident? How, at what point did you know you were free? And what did that deliverance process look like on those on those things? Well, for um, I would say for the anxiety, I we I went to church one time. I think it was a Bible study, and I was sitting in church, and they were passing around like the microphone and everything for each and every one of us to like have a chance to do a prayer, and. I didn't know, but when I got the microphone, like my hands started shaking real bad. And I thought I was, I thought it was just asthma. I didn't know what it was, but I just knew I started feeling funny. And it was like, my hand was like rejecting a microphone, like for me to speak and stuff like that. But I ended up praying. And after I prayed, I went and told my mom and stuff. And that's when they had taken me outside and started praying against the uh, spirit of anxiety. But when I in the before they started praying against it, my body would tense up, but you know, still not know anything about it or what it meant. Um, I thought I had thought that I was just cold. Like I thought I was cold and my body was like tensing from the cold and stuff, but I found out that was the way that the spirit was manifesting. So the woman had called it out and she started praying against it. And that's when I had got free from anxiety and the depression It was so, I would say what that hit home. Cause I was sitting in my room one day and I had shared a room with my sisters and I was just sitting on the bed and my sister looked at me and she said, you look dead. And that scared the living daylights out of me. And I don't know why it scared me as bad as it did, but it did. And after, I think I had started praying and stuff like that. I know I changed up my routine because I couldn't do keep doing the same thing that I was doing before. So I don't remember the deliverance from the depression, but I definitely do from the anxiety. And that was like just a whole lot of heaving, like, um, what is it called? Hyperventilating and stuff like that. Um, like the spirit actually manifests itself. And then for the passing out, that gradually over time it just lessened and lessened like here and there I would have like a few symptoms from it and stuff like that like the um draining of the energy and stuff but after I really started seeking God that's when it just completely stopped but I had my family like glory be to God they were praying over me and stuff like that so Hallelujah. That was powerful. Thank you for sharing. It's beautiful, too, because a lot of people do experience depression and anxiety. So just to share how you were actually delivered is um, a testimony in itself to allow people to know that that they, too, can be set free. Yeah, it's a it's, I feel like it's a um, people need to be educated on it, too. Because like I said, I didn't know the name for it. I was I was calling it something that it wasn't until I found out what it was. Hallelujah. Did, um, did anybody else have any questions or comments to Sister Ashari? Oh, I just want to say praise God and thank you for sharing your testimony. Um, I wish I had learned the things that you learned when I was 20. Because sometimes now I'm like, Lord, I'm too old for this. Help me. <laughs> but I know it's all a part of his process and all a part of his plan. So, you know, all glory to God. Thank you. Amen. All right. Well, anybody else got any questions or comments or anything for Sister Ashari? Encouragement, anything? I just have one last question for you, sis, before we uh, close out on your testimony. Um, I like how um, when I watch the interviews, um, the ones that I told you guys about the testimonies, he always asked them at the end, he said, so who is Jesus to you? So I just want to ask you this, who is Jesus to you?
Um, that's a good question. I would. He's my friend. Like, he's my best friend. And I want to. Ex- I'm gonna explain a little bit behind that because he did send me through like a season of sep- this whole year up until now. Like, I feel released from the season of separation, but after like I got out of that relationship and broke off all those like ungodly relationships and stuff. He's really shown himself to be like that friend in those times where like all my siblings will be out doing something or like, you know, be on FaceTime with somebody or I would just be sitting at home by myself, had nowhere to go. He really showed up for for me in that time. So he, not my best friend. He's my friend. Like, I mean, not my friend. My, he's my best friend. That's what I would say. That's who he is to me. Hallelujah. That's just beautiful. I'm over here smiling. I know the ladies are smiling. I can't see their faces, but I know they're over there smiling too. Hallelujah. That's so beautiful. Um, Sister Sean, Sister Shanae, and Sister Javon, if y'all three can hear me, Ashari was asking me earlier today about fasting, and she was saying, you know, that she's smaller in weight. And she was saying that, you know, she was concerned about losing weight on her fasting and she had fasted and she lost some weight and someone was like, oh my gosh, you look sick. And I know that that's something that all three of you had experienced. So what could you tell her to encourage her and help her? Or what did God give you guys to help out with the fasting? Good evening, ladies. Oh, um, oh, go ahead. Well, uh, basically, well, how can I put it? Um, yes, I lost weight. Yes, it was an issue. It looked like I was sick and all that. But um, God just put it on my heart and said, um, forget about that. Because what I'm doing is more important than the weight that I'm going to lose. And then, I mean, that's what he told me. Don't worry about that part. Thank you, Sister Shanae. What about you, Javon? I was just going to say, can y'all hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I was just going to say, we had spoke about it before regarding fasting. Like whenever I was fasting in the church and I was just doing the corporate fast because everyone else was fasting. I remember this one time I had did um, the Daniel fast with the church and I'm like, oh, I'm fasting. Oh, no, I can't eat that. Like, or people would invite me out and I say, oh, I can't eat. I can't go out. I'm fasting. Like, I would just like be fasting for all the wrong reasons. And when I fast with the church, um, I think I lost like 12 to 15 pounds. But now it seems like when I'm fasting, like, I don't know if I just haven't noticed or it just seems like God is putting all my weight in all the right places, at least for me. <laughs> um so he has blessed me regardless like with me doing fast and I have not lost weight doing fast lately um I've had to ask him before like Lord please don't let me lose weight with the fast like I know it's a part of it but if you could just take that part out um maybe he's answered that prayer or maybe like I said I just haven't noticed but like um Shanae said like the more important part, like God will fulfill um, everything regardless. And you won't even be thinking about that afterwards. You're just like, okay, I, I'm just tiny. Oh, well. Um, but I also want to say, I just thank you for sharing your testimony. Thank you for um, allowing Gwen to record. I cannot wait to go over this um, with my teenage daughters. And I know it's going to feed them and they will be blessed by it. And I just appreciate it. And like Augusta said, like such a young age and you were able to speak profoundly um, about Christ in ways that some adults can't. So I don't want them to think that because they always say to me, oh, you talk like it's 1800s. I mean, I, I tell them all the time, I've never seen 1800s. Thank you. But hearing it from a young person, I think that they'll take more heed to it 
versus hearing it from me. So I just appreciate you sharing um, and giving us the encouragement, like the lady said. I have to um, come in last and just agree with the uh, Shanae and Javon. Um, you know, I don't really think there's too much we can do a uh, smaller people um, when we fast. Um, that was a good uh, idea that Javon had as far as just trying to like pray that you don't lose the weight because I went through the same thing with you do look sick. Um, and it, it's, it can be, um, it, can, it does affect your self-esteem. It does affect, you know, the way that you feel um, because we are, we're tiny people. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm looking at your picture and probably definitely around that size, like 117 right now. Um, so it's really hard. Um, but like, you know, the Shanae and Javon said, you know, you just, it's something that you go through and, um, just try to, you know, mentally prepare for it beforehand and just leave it to God, you know, that he's going to um, supply you with all your needs um, before, during, and afterwards, and that you're going to gain the weight back, um, and that you're going to gain so much more while fasting than what you're going to lose. And I know for me, like, I just try to do shorter ones. Like, I was, um, I've never done a long one. Like, I would never try a 40-day one. Um, I probably, I feel like I would disappear off the earth. Um, but yeah, I just try to do short ones. Um, so something that's, that I feel like I can sustain within my own body weight, you know, that I can still give myself to God, um, continuously and diligently, um, without necessarily it affecting like my health at that point. So, um, but that's a good question, and I, I thank you um, for thank you for that, Gwen, and thank you for your your testimony. I really appreciated the fact that you know um, pointing out that you had several losses, and I, I think that all of us at some point have experienced loss, and um, showing like how God was able to strengthen you through that. And, you know, bless you, um, even though you were, you experienced loss was, that's a beautiful testimony. So thank you. Amen. Thank you ladies for sharing that with her. I couldn't give her that information because I, I didn't know, but I knew you guys had it. So we just thank you guys for giving her that encouragement. Um, Sister Ashari, uh, did you want to, how's your ear? Did you want to talk about what happened, uh, your testimony from earlier today? Yes, I do. So um, I was talking to uh, Miss Gwen on the phone earlier today and I had just, I don't know how it got brought up, but I started, I was like, um, I want to get your input on something like my ear. I've been, I've been having a sensation in my ear as if something's in, in my ear. Like if I can, as if I could reach in and like physically take it out. But of course there was nothing in my ear and it was causing me not to be able to hear very well and certain sounds would really it would hurt my head and stuff and this has been going on since April but it's progressively have gotten worse and I was going to go and get my ear checked but I've had some issues with like insurance and stuff so she ended up praying for me and I thank God like I thank God so much it made me so emotional when she was praying for me because I didn't tell her this but I started to feel bad because like I knew she had her child with her and stuff. And I'm like, oh, this thing is stubborn. Like it, it was manifesting, but it was only on the right side of my body and stuff. So it was it was really weird. It was it was it's like it's like in a way I knew something was there, but I wasn't sure something was there because I was, of course, praying against it and nothing was happening. So yeah she was like really really she was determined and she like praying 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 and it finally lifted up off of me my ear is fine um 
my hands are fine, my eye is fine and stuff like that. I've been having some problems. Like I've been doing what you told me to do. Like every time I feel that feeling and stuff to pray against and I've been doing that and stuff. So it's, I've been having it like in my foot, like in my toes and stuff like that, but I'm fine. I'm fine now. Oh, yeah, I was delivered today from something. <laughs> Glory be to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So your ear is, is totally clear now? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Glory to God. We just thank and praise God. Isn't he awesome, y'all? Isn't he awesome? All right, y'all got anything else? Did you have anything else you wanted to close out with, Sister Ashari? Anything? Mm. Um. Oh, yo, uh, I want to add something that I didn't get to add before. In the beginning of this year, I want to say that I had, I wasn't necessarily like, I had big dreams, like I wanted to travel the world. I just didn't know how to get there. So in a way, I had a bum, in, I had a bum mindset. Like I was like, it's okay for me to live in, in out of a van. Like that, that's fine. I'm okay with that as long as they got a bed and stuff. But the Lord blessed me with this job uh, that I was telling you about to where I can travel around you know and I was in like the company of rich people and I was hearing how they were talking I was hearing how their children was talking and as I'm doing this like with this job and stuff I'm diligently seeking God he began to change my desires and y'all I'm I used to want to live in a like an RV and stuff and just travel around y'all I want to build my own house from the ground up like I want so many things now and I know that it's possible to get there but I know that everything that I want isn't for me it's for my children like it's for it's for other people so he's definitely changed my desires and that like that's something I want to add is anybody just been crying the whole time she's been talking because like my heart has just been crying and I just been feeling teary-eyed so I don't is it just me <laughs> yes no. It's oh my goodness. <laughs> Real quick, because she was just saying, like, and I'm just saying, look, it, it's so beautiful. And I'm just listening to her and I'm like, wow, like, um, and she was saying earlier, like, I know I'm all over the place. But it's like, girl, you articulate your feelings very well. It's very clear. Um, is informative, is rewarding, is encouraging, and is um is beautiful. Like I truly appreciate it. I too have a uh, twenty. My daughter be twenty five, and my baby just turned twenty two. Then I got some stepkids too. But for the most part, it's it's rewarding, and I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. <laughs> yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.